First meeting, first presenter is Brenda Yvitel. She is uh, serving on the ITSMF uh, National Board. Earlier she was uh, lead president here in the Bay Area. And she, she has a long background in, in ITSM. And we, we know each other for a long time as well. So she would. They were born yesterday, though. Right? <laughs> we're just ten. Yeah, yeah. We're just ten. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So she will talk about an interesting topic. I, I, I think you will enjoy. After her presentation, we will have a small panel and trying to discuss what she told and other interesting topics. Sure. And also, you can add whatever you are interested in. Thanks, Ivan. Very much. Okay. Well, this is exciting to have the lid coming back to, together again um, in ITSMF, which is IT Service Management Forum, um, as Kalyan just mentioned. There are, interestingly enough, um, in ITSMF USA, about 42 LIGs, just like this, that meet all over the country. And the COIs, the communities of interest that he also explained, right, those are the kind of the birds of a feather group. Those are actively going as well. Those are more virtual groups. And so this is really exciting to have uh, energy going on in the Bay Area. Kalyan, I know you were at the impetus of this, you and Ivan and Dawn, and so thanks very much, Pradeep, for, your, uh, for seeing this through. It takes a lot, because everybody has day jobs and you're all pretty busy, I know. So uh, a couple things, and I will, um, for a, a couple of we women in the group, I will tell you some, kind of some interesting things, because I know that you've all worked a long day, probably well over 15 hours <laughs> before you opted to come here too. And so we'll try to keep this fun as well. Um, as much as service management is in the fun <laughs> column, but at least uh, maybe some entertaining as well. So we have, um, you know, a, two years ago, actually in, in October of 2014, for the Friday night study, kind of started this when I was with uh, Bank of America, right? Um, and started really studying generational demographics. But in 20, October of 2014, women outnumbered men in the United States and Canadian workforce. First time ever. This past October in 2015, the Gen Y, millennials, are the largest generation in today's workforce in, in the United States and Canada. So, why do I tell you that one? Why did I go there? Because of this. Now, Ivan could have just read off the whole thing. Okay, president of this, president of that, worked at this place, worked at that place. And it would have been kind of like the Charlie Brown thing, right? As you are given that the millennials are the largest generation in the workforce, right? The baby boomers are a pretty large generation, but we 10,000 baby boomers a day turn 65 in this country and will continue for the next eight years. That means a lot of them are already starting to retire, right? And so that millennials are the largest generation in the workforce. What do they love? Connection, pictures, Anytime, even on something as boring as a wrap, you know, your CV sheet, add some pictures. As you're appealing to those millennials, add some pictures, right? You're going to bring them in and engage them. And so I, I took that note um, several, actually years ago, I, I do quite a bit of speaking, and so I started, oh, okay. So what you're really going to remember is that I, I love people, I love animals, Love music. I'm a professional clarinet player when I'm not doing this. My husband is a conductor. Right? You're going to remember actually probably those things more than what president or this or that that you've done. Right? And so anyway, just kind of a, these are the free tips that you get tonight, okay? <laughs> okay. And because it's been a long day, I threw in some games because I know it is not. I mean, what do you think? Are they moving? Yeah. Yes. You're moving, huh? <laughs> you guys, this is a flat file up here. <laughs> but they're tricky, aren't they? And, and in fact, perception plays a lot. A lot of what we do is in the perception. How you package things or frame, frame something up, certainly. And we're going to be talking a lot about that. If you're talking about taking service management beyond IT, Okay, we, we pride, but we, with respect, call us the, right, yes, we're the, we're the nerdy, we're the nerds, the fun nerds, right? In IT, right, that's what the business calls us. But now we're gonna be going out to the business, and so when we're talking about that, we, we talk about perception a lot. So, all right, here's some quick fun things, like if you're saying, oh my gosh, there's so many slides, yeah, but we're gonna whip through them some pretty quick as well. So, this is to get your brain re-engaged, all right? We're testing your knowledge 
on terms, right? Some of the terms that we constantly use in this space. So uh, no tests, this is late at night, so no tests, but you can play this fun game. <laughs> Spin through that list, ASA, FCR, MTTR, right? You know what they are? Average speed of answer, first call resolution, mean time of recovery, mean time between failures, root cause analysis, are you getting them, right? All right, those terms need to roll off your lips, right? And, and in your head, you need these in your head because you're not gonna have slides when you're talking to them. These are our standard terms, we need to know them. But I write your cheat sheet, and yes, I will send these slides to Ivan <laughs> as soon as I'm done so that you can all have these for your teams too, hopefully, right? So yeah, get, get your taxonomy down because that's a big part of this space, right? Having the service taxonomy down. How about here? Right, service relation management, service management office, IT asset management, right? You know some of these, right? SAS, PaaS, IAS, right? Okay, single pane of glass, right? These are some more of our industry terms. Again, okay, there's the answers. <laughs> so and I will show these slides. So you're, you're gonna wanna make sure you're real up on these uh, as well. Okay, the way I kind of, I'm like, XAAS, like how do you remember, oh, what's what, right? SAS, PASS, IAS, I just kind of remember, oh yeah, SAS, right, you consume it, you build on it, and you migrate to it, right? So I'm just kind of give you a quick hint or how you explain it to people, that's kind of how I keep it straight in my, my head. Robbie, you'll cer certainly have a lot to say that you live there for <laughs> full time, don't you? <laughs> okay, all right, so again, when we, um, again with the perception, how many legs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the consultant's answer, right? It depends. Yeah. <laughs> what the customer wants. <laughs> yeah. 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 Again, all in some of the perception, right? For sure. All right. So we're talking about millennials born in the cloud. Think about this, and this is um, this is actually shocking. And you think, wow, 9/11 was such a significant time. But do you realize the kids in grade school? Talking about 9-11 is like talking about Pearl Harbor to us. Mm -hmm. Like we read about it in history books, but they weren't alive. They weren't alive when it was going on. And they, they were, there's not a time they didn't have the cloud and they didn't have a smartphone, right? They're growing up with all of that. So kind of keep that in mind for your tools, your processes, and what I, and, and what I mean by that. When we, when we talk about you're rolling out a new tool or a new process, it needs to be what I call Google intuitive, Amazon easy because that's what they use in their regular life. So why would they want to come to work and use archaic tools or be frustrated to death, right? So kind of keep those in mind when you're talking about doing training. Are you talking about the old like this, the PowerPoint? No, when, if you go ask a millennial, well, can you write a training? Yeah, they're gonna grab their smartphone and do a video clip, right? That's where they do it. So where will your to tools load those? Where will those video clips be loaded, right? Because that's the, so those kind of things we, we need to kind of be thinking about for sure. So we'll kind of talk about the cloud apocalypse, right? Um, information and services, stealth IT being the new norm. The whole notion about services versus not just technology, no, technology and where it comes in with the business. <laughs> and then we'll take an example um, we don't want this to be ivory tower, right? We're, we're all real here and hope, my hope at the end of this is that my, this is, I'm gonna plant, plant the seed. I hope when we're done with this, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna have lunch with the head of HR next, uh, next week. I'm gonna schedule something with facilities and go tell them. You're, you're probably sitting on a gold mine inside each of your companies. With doing service management, we have this great kept secret that we've been doing for years, and we do it pretty well, right? So all things service management, right? That your line of business colleagues would probably love to hear about, right? But they have no idea why. Wow, using that, what do you have? How, how, how does it work? You automate things? You report on things? You have trending things? Right, some of the common things that we have. And so in our personal life, in our tasks, social life, um, productivity, collaboration, we have seen this across the board, the cloudization, right? And uh, what kind of the cult, uh, what the, like the cloud apocalypse, if you will. Now, it does not mean these are dead. I don't mean to imply that these Microsoft's dead, PeopleSoft's dead. I don't mean that at all. I just mean that was the only game in town, and now there's a cloud equivalent to almost everything you can think of. And if you haven't heard of the app today, it's probably going to be there tomorrow, right? And so we've seen this whole switch in mean, how we do expenses and how book travel, marketing, your CRM systems, your mail systems, uh, sharing, 
right? We've seen a huge trend towards the cloud. And no, it's not just a phase. As a matter of fact, in just three and a half, not even, 3.3 years, we're gonna be in 2020. $160 billion market in 2020. This thing's not a fad, right? It's definitely gonna to continue to grow, for sure. And so stealth IT, you know, and, and who is uh, doing some sort of, used to remember the big, oh, word, oh, we're outsourcing, and everybody scrambled for their jobs. That is not the case. It's so mainstream anymore, and pieces of, right? Whether you're Coca-Cola, the beverage company, you want to just be a beverage company. Stop bothering me about data centers and nonsense. It, you might be Kaiser, like, like I and Louie. Okay, and they're in healthcare. That's what they're doing. That's their business, right? Um, so what is it that is your business, what's the business of your business, right? And, and so this whole stealth IT and, and sourcing part of it, parts of it that you don't need to worry about has some benefits, as we all know, right? And they can live, co-live with one another. And so we talk and focus on service. And for all of you, um, everybody foundation certified, service management, I feel foundation certified at least. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. Taxonomy of the future, I remember five years ago, where's Terry? In, in HCI circles saying, I guarantee you, if you're not at least foundation certified, you will not be working in this industry. You just won't. You have to at least know the language, at the very least. So, because how, how is it that we can sit here from Kaiser and Palo Alto Net Networks and Oracle um, and ServiceNow and you, you guys continue, um, a FET tech. <laughs> uh, right? How is it we have all these different companies and we can talk to it, one another and be on the same page? We know what we're talking about. We're not talking, we're talking about incidents, problems. No, you don't mix those up. They're very different things. And when we're talking about what is a service, it's a very defined thing. And so let's talk about that, right? One or more capabilities which enable a business process. Well, it might be in IT, but it might be in facilities or HR, legal, right? Absolutely. But it's delivering value to customers, and the customers don't want to hear about it being, oh, that's a database issue, oh, that's a, oh, that's a network, that's not a, oh, that's an application. They don't care. If their email's not working, that's an issue. If they can't get to their forecasting report, that's an issue. If they can't book loans, not, not good. If they can't do a surgery in the operating room, not good, right? They need to have their, their business up and working. And so we just kind of, as a reminder there, for our, for our back to the ITIL Foundation days, right, what is a service? And, and what is it, you're right, you, you want the focus on there, you want to mitigate risks and have some efficiencies through some automation that you can do, thankfully, with all the ITIL compatible tools on the market today. And frankly, that's another area. You know, it used to be hardy debate, who should you do the process or the tool? Oh, you got to do the process first. No, <laughs> truthfully, process is very important. And I'm 10 years with Pink Elephant, so I would tell you I'm a process girl all day long. But I can tell you that the tools in the space today, they wouldn't be alive in the space today. They've already come and gone or been acquired. If they are not at least idle compatible, they don't exist, right? So you're not going to be like steering off a wrong path like it would have been like a decade ago, right? How'd you pick, if you did the, if you did the, you know, picked a tool like, oh dear, processes won't work. That, that's really not so much anymore. And thankfully, we have with the other disciplines, not only the service management fra framework, but Lean IT and Co. So here's a hot tip, right? Um, Dear, you're filming, all right, you're filming, so my group, and however, hopefully that's going to stay controlled, but I hope my, my national board colleagues will honor this as well, because it's really exciting. So at the national level, at IT Service Management Forum, national level, um, I happen to be, I, I'm the board of director for alliances, right? And so one of the things we've really been working hard is to build some synergies with the other frameworks in the space, who we need to care about. So we're about, you're about ready to hear in the next week, uh, hot off the press, a press release announcement that we have just inked an agreement with Lean IT. So IT Service Management Forum, ITSMF, and Lean IT Alliance Partners that you're gonna see, start seeing some joint webinars, et cetera. Um, right on the heels of that, we're about to put ink on the DASA agreement, which is DevOps and Agile. So pretty exciting, some exciting things going on at the national level with these alliances. But what do they, and why do I tell that? Because one common things that all these frameworks have, whether it's COBIT or Lean IT or DevOps, um, ISACA, is Dr. Deming. Thank you, Dr. Deming. Continuous service improvement, right? Book five in the ITIL V3 books, right? And thank you, George Spalding, Jared, Gary Case, who authored that book. 
right? The continuous plan do check that. Always the continuously improving. And we're always, we're charged with doing that. Even in our own league, right? So kind of ebbed and flowed and it, and it was, this league was very active. And then came a period and there was a lot going on in the Bay Area, right? The resurgence, dot com, dot com, boom. <laughs> then re back up, right? And sometimes things need to just take a hiatus. And it did. And now, thanks to your board here, got the energy and the effort to put this going back for moving forward again with some new energy. So always continuously improving, right? It's something that we do. So you have the old, you know, the traditional service desk model. You have, you know, I come up and ask Dawn, hey, this isn't working or I need something and can you fix it? And she makes it up a ticket and, you know, goes and asks somebody to do something or she does it herself and, you know, fulfill the request, right? Kind of the old model. Um, and, and then, in fact, we talk about things with, right, IT talks about all the stuff, you know, the, the component parts, right? We see things as component parts, right? Desktop servers, applications, database, network. No one, we would tell all the, we would tell the clients that was the traditional answer. No, the application's down. Oh, the network is down. Oh, the database is clogged up. Oh, it's latency. Whatever, what, and it would just sound like Charlie Brown on the end of the phone, right, to the business person. Wah, 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 wah. So, I don't know. Something in those computers doesn't work. But it might, I can't do what I'm trying to do, right? And so that is our job in service management is to bridge the gap. That's what, that's what we need to be doing. And I want to, besides just being IT service management professionals, I would charge that in fact tonight I want us going out with thinking we are service management professionals. It, doesn't, it might be in IT, might be in any of the lines of business talent. We are service management <coughs> professionals. And so well, there's, a, there's a difference, right? So we've stopped thinking about things as the technology and more as the service. And certainly in the cloud world as well, right? To have a service perspective, <coughs> even in the cloud world as well. <coughs> it's our job to be bridging that gap, right? And so kind of a couple of visuals that we can do some scene there. So when you think about it, let me just ask you some key components and don't you think this might have some sharing? So in IT, you request things, you report something's broken, right? It was working a minute ago and it's not now. Or you need knowledge. And you can write it down and perhaps do some reporting on it. Right? Those are key components, whether you're in IT or in any of the line of business towers. That's some pretty big common ground there, don't you think? And in fact, that's, it. that's exactly what this is saying, right? So you have employees or customers, internal, external, they still have those kind of, those five things that they need to do. And you have the fulfillers, right? In which line of business and somebody's gonna fulfill that. And the more advanced you get, you can automate some of the workflow, do some auto automation, um, so you're not having to do so much manual work, right? You don't have to be so engaged in that. Those are common pieces. Kind of like this is saying as well. So you have your service relationship management, you have your record keeping of all your trends and uh, executive dashboards, your reporting dashboards, and your messaging, right? Whether it comes out person, which channels, right? Is it multi-channel <coughs> supports? So come from a walk-up, phone, email, chat. You're still having those functions go on. And so probably some of you have seen these, right? They call it ITIL or IT service management, the ERP for IT, if you will. Uh, those of you who heard Troy Dumoulin speak many times, he, he kind of coined that term, I think, actually about a decade ago, here for IT. And many of us live right here in, in service management and in IT operations, starting to go into information technology. Good, good place to go, but these are, we are maturing out, right? Capability maturity model, right, with the CMMI, and where are you on the maturity scale? So this kind of says, all right, what's next? What's coming? So you do the basic... Uh, George Spalding also, always used to talk, what's after the incident problem change dance, right? What is next? Get into mobile, starting to release, um, your configuration management with your CDD, right? All those discoveries, starting your business service maps, how you're going to be tackling the kind of more difficult pieces, your, your portfolio, service portfolio, and your demand management. But then how about into the business, into the HR case management, and your governance, risk, and compliance, your GRC pieces? Uh, maybe it's in your legal case management, facilities case management. Ah, Brenda, you're saying a new term. Because this is really important. In IT, we talk about incidents, right? You have many, many incidents, and you can have multiple incidents connected to a problem. In your lines of business, if they're cases, 
That's a very simple change, but I, they will not hear you if you use incident. They don't understand that term. It's not familiar. HR deals in cases. Facilities deals in cases. Legal deals in cases. You have case management, right? So you just change a few different things in our IT jargon, and you absolutely can have a very meaningful conversation. And so some of that, and we're going to we're going to do the example. I'll, let me just go right here. I, what I thought I would do. So we've been talking about some concepts. I'm going to. I know I'm a visual person, and I thought it might be more meaningful if we pick one of the towers, and we happen to pick service uh, HR, case management, and talk about some of these things in HR, like how would it look like? What would the conversation be? So imagine you decide you, 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 have, you have a couple buddies, they work in HR, and you start talking about this. How, what are the lang what's the language you, you need to use? How do you tell them about this great secret you have over in IT service management? And then it just might help to automate and make them more productive. They, you have um, an HDI, one of the founders was Ron Buns, and he taught us something a long time ago, and it was pick something up, drop something off, pick something up. Drop something off, pick something up. That has always stick with, stayed with me. And so tonight when you walk through those doors, hopefully you will amongst yourselves, whether it's on the panels, on the networking that we just did, maybe the presentation, you will pick something up, something you didn't know when you came through those doors that you will know when you go out, and you drop something off, something you know that one of your colleagues in this room doesn't know. That's kind of the same thing with our business colleagues, right? You have something they don't know, and it's how, it's what service management is and how powerful, that we know firsthand how powerful service management is when done well, right? That's something that you can share with your HR colleagues. I'm gonna use HR. This absolutely translates to facilities, to legal, to real estate. You fill in the blanks, right? These, so this is, we're gonna take one example, but these absolutely translate. So you have the, it would shock you, actually, to find out how many Fortune 500 companies are doing things like HR with emails, yellow sticky notes, sometimes pink, and spreadsheets. I mean, it would shock you. And you think, oh my gosh, you're running Fortune 500 companies like this? How does everyone keep track of all the mess, right? So requests or information, like what do they need? There's all the regs, right? So all the PHI data, the personal data, the right security, you have all the compliance regs going that they have to keep track of. Certainly all the different classification, you know, can everybody in the room know or just the front table know or just the right HR, like others, like in legal, you have generalists and HR specialists, right? So do those get to know? Does all of IT get to see everything in the HR, right? Those security issues become pretty big deals. And that's one of the first things they're going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, but we have, that's in IT. We, if we do anything on an IT service tool, that means IT can see all of our stuff. And you can't, it's private. You don't want people to know who's having a baby and who has what illness and health and but now thankfully to our tools they accommodate that right and they can accommodate those different security levels that is not an issue anymore thankfully but you have routing so does someone have to go knock on someone's door oh can i can i get you to take a look at this request or can it be automated done right they're going to be all ears and some of that all this coordination and control with the other group think of hr there's onboarding how many of you and, and imagine the cost productivity cost if you when people show up if you hire them from the time of hire they already know their IDs when they walk through the door they have their laptop their cell phone all their ID access their parking everything how much more productive would that be like that's some pretty powerful stuff right and so you you think about like okay so what is it what it is and that's all the request things like how, how do I what's the tuition reimbursement policy how do I add a baby onto my insurance policy? Um, which, what's our vacation coverage, right? And what are my, when do my benefits kick in? What about extended family? What's leave of absence, right? All those kind of things. That's what HR's case management is all about. What it is not, you're not even remotely suggesting, oh, we're gonna replace the whole financial management system. <coughs> or we're gonna take the, yes, we're gonna take over payroll or do time and attendance. No, 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 no. That's not what HR case management is. So let's be really clear. It's like telling app dev guys, uh, you're gonna take Jira away from them. <laughs> you won't be the popular guy in the room, I trust me. <laughs> right? So then they want to hear about the integrations that you're gonna be talking about. Like how, how do they get involved in the process? And so same thing, so, so be really clear. 
look, I'm not suggesting we're going to wipe out all of your systems you love, know and love, and it's not going to be too, you know, bigger than a bread box. So be very clear on what, what it is that you're talking about. And we talked about the jargon. Be sure to use case. Use case management. Use examples that they're here. So they don't want to hear, if you're going to say, you're going to tell them about this, don't use a database going down or a server going down as an example. Talk about, oh, they can't, you can't ask for your tuition reimbursement. Well, oh, what? You can't switch departments. You can't transfer. Use those kind of examples, right? That will resonate to the business that they're in and mean something. So use their language. So here's current, right? And this is where you could start. All right, so how do I edit all your requests? All right, so how do I do this? Well, they're going to search past emails from HR, SharePoint. They're going to go along looking at things. They might email somebody, probably call someone. They're going to need more, the HR general is going to need more information. So they send some more emails, right? Do some more calling. They, then they escalate to level two. Well, can you look into this? I don't know the answer. You look into this. And so these things are going back and forth, emails back and forth, calls back and forth, issues being resolved, asking people, looking at different places, seeing if you can find the answer, time so wasting, no log whatsoever. If the person you're asking goes out on vacation or gets sick, no record whatsoever, nothing. As an IT person, you're thinking, do you, do you categorize all these kind of requests? They're just all hundreds of requests in a big old heap on a desk? But what? what you don't have anyone to assign that? How do you know? You take this, you're, code, you're part of A through C in the alphabet? What, how, how, how do you assign these things? How does this work? And what do, they, what do you do if they go on vacation? What about, are there, you know, are there any self-service, like FAQs? Like, you mean you answer the same question every single day? You get asked it 10 times and you, a person answers those? That's kind of, so you're kind of talking through that. Which, and try not to be too like, oh, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> not to be too shocked. This is what they've dealt with, right? There hasn't been, that is their norm. Yeah, sure, Tammy went on vacation. We just have to wait till she gets back. Or I don't know, you can explain the whole thing to Sam, but he doesn't know this whole history, <laughs> right? And, and what, forget about the reports. How long does it take to resolve those cases? What kind of cases are they? Are they benefits related? Are they 401k related? Are they, what, what are they, right? so that they could do some of the trending and, and audit, good luck, I don't know. Well, I guess you'll have to subpoena some emails, no pun intended. Um, security kind of issues, like, okay, this is not a very, doesn't look too much efficiency in here, huh? A lean IT person will have a field day with this. <laughs> right? There's a lot of waste that you can take out of there. So, okay, you're probably at the lunchroom and you dry it on a napkin, might dry it on a board, like that, all right, get down the workflow. No, you know what, I can help, I can help you with this. We have this, these cool things, you know, in the groups I work with, I think that might be really interesting to your team. We could do some automation, so that way all these smart people you have in HR could really go out and do really tough stuff instead of answering those same ten, you know, question 10 times a day. Right? What could you, oh, you wouldn't have to call all these people? It could just happen automatically, would route to the right person. You could just assign levels, so you could have a, like a generalist level, level one, or specialist levels. Yeah, we can do that. It can all be handled even in systems, no problem. We can help you with that. Okay, you're starting to hear dollar signs, right? So if you're talking with an HR and executive, they're thinking, oh, wow, I think this might be some productivity and some dollar savings. And so, you know, of course it gets the policy right and the, and the experts are like, well, well, you know, this isn't working. I think we just need to change the policy. Well, based on what? This? This is a mess, right? And so what if instead, ah, what if we bring some service management to the field and put some order and structure in this? And so, in fact, you built, said, you know what, for all those things that get asked 10 times a day, what if we built a knowledge portal? So they could go one place and just get answers. All these things could be automated, right? <clears throat> Each person, you can have your cases, whether it's HR, facilities, real estate, IT things, it's all in one place. Wouldn't that be cool? You don't have to worry about, oh, if it's this, I call this person. If it's this, I can look on that website. This, I look on that SharePoint site. No, all in one place. Um, having some templates, right? Yes, we could create those. So you're telling me every single time this always gets routed to Tom? Okay, we can build that in, no problem. A person does not have to walk that over to Tom's office. We could get that to him, 
right? The information. You, you, see, you see how this is sort of lining up, right? You see how these conversations are going? The case, and, and you can have tasks. It might be that their request has three or four parts. Does that sound familiar? Like an onboarding request or service request, right? When someone's starting, oh, they need a laptop, they need a cell phone, they need a parking pass. Those are all subtasks, right? Work assignments. And they go to a work assignment group. Same kind of thing in HR. And out of that, for your leadership, we can produce actual reports that they could then do some trending on. They could have some idea of what is this big bound that's coming in every single day. What are your people spending their time doing? And how could that, that be improved? This could be an interesting conversation, don't you think? And so this is what we're talking about, leveraging service management. We do such cool things, but to a sticky note environment and spreadsheets and people driven, this is, that brings some pretty aha moments, right? And, and so you get, you have the perception factor. You seen a face or anyone seen a word up there? Maya. Oh, that's a word too. Just checking, making sure you're still awake. You know, it is the evening. Throw in some games, right? Throw in some games, but also, all right, so if you, if you see a man's face, turn your head, shift your head a little bit and see if you see a word. What do you see? You don't see the word liar up there? Turn your head sideways. <laughs> the other way. This is the L. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> don't forget the perception factor, right? You want to be honoring, certainly not condescending, because they're always a little bit nervous about talking with IT people, because they're going to, they don't. I think they might feel like they don't know things, right? And that's not a great way to feel for anybody, right? But they and they are good at their business. You, we will have those regs. But how about if you could present them a clean portal, right? So wow, what if this was very clean, single pane of glass? Which, right? Leveraging service management beyond IT. What if you had a single pane of glass portal? And you could do this in bite-sized chunks, by the way, you know. So maybe you have, well, so I just used ours, right, for some partners. This happens to be built on ServiceNow, pretty graceful to handle. You can use your tool, tool of choice, but it's, it's graceful. So you put, so there's the IT, maybe just have IT. And then you decide to bring HR case management in. Okay, so then you show just HR. And facilities, finance, legal, those aren't even showing. And as you stand those up, they can be on this single, single pane of glass portal, right? Very clean, one-stop shop, everyone, they don't have to remember all these different numbers. Very, very clean. And so, ah, then what, what would you need to do to be helping them? So all these requests, and we have, we have, actually, you're talking to your HR person, you know, we have this thing, like if I took you to a lunch, let's, I, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take you all to my favorite dinner place, we'll just go right now, and we're gonna sit down, and then the server's gonna come up and ask you, and say, well, well what would you, what would you like? What, what, what would you like? And pretty soon you're gonna be looking at me like, Where's the menus? Don't they have a menu? <laughs> Where's the menu? So we have these things called in like menus. It's we call it service catalog, but it's like a catalog of your HR, what to, what to pick in HR. Oh, okay, they can get that. Don't scare them off with the service catalog, right? Kind of just make, warm them up. Tell them what it's like. It's like a menu, okay? Service catalog gives them what ideas. Oh, oh, so you could like group these things. So the, these things like the comp payroll things could be in in one menu pick item. Maybe benefits and recognition in another menu pick, if you will. That there's, you're starting to make the bridge. Oh, okay, I, I see how this could work, okay. So you're telling me if I click the HR thing on that front page, then these would come up. And then I, they would, that would be how I choose these, you know, how I a ask my requests. Yeah, sure. And what if in a portal, again, your portal, right, you can keep these kind of grayed out and just use the ones you use, but what if it was, very easy to navigate, right? It's all in one place. It's easy to request things and easy to find things. They can get knowledge, they can get the request filled. Easy to review. Think of your IT people. Now they don't have to go to different queues, right? They can just, this happens to be for HR, this happens to be for IT, this happens to be whatever. It's all one queue, they fulfill it regular, right? It's a lot of productivity on a, on a lot of different fronts. This is looking pretty, this is looking pretty appealing at it. No more, no more yellow sticky notes. We can do this. Okay, that's looking pretty interesting. Well, and then to show you know in HR, okay. And so yeah, let's look at this. Does that look pretty scary? No, it's pretty easy. Write your request down. I need a, you know, I need to know my 401k, 401k options. All right, fine. So you have that's not too scary, right? They can capture that. 
And then what you would tell them, like, we're gonna, we'll like workflow this out. So we'll write your workflow on what your level, you know, your self-service, your HR self-service question, your generalist question, your specialist question. We'll kind of make a workflow out and see where this, uh, where, where we need to put the, the uh, decision points and the questions, right? All right, got, got it, got it. And it's translating like this, right? So from those flow, ch flow charts, you're gonna have your knowledge pieces, your how-to things going on. You'll have your request forms. Oh, oh, all these things. So here you've taken this whole massive chaos where we saw in that first thing. Okay, you have knowledge, how-to, you have your different requests, right? I need something, which can be translated into tasks and notifications and workflow, all automated, no problem, we can do that for you. Integrations, can you still continue to use your Workdays and your PeopleSoft and your AD? No problem, absolutely. We'll take all that data in, put it into your whatever tool you're, you're using for service management, no problem. Do the integration, clean, easy, not a big deal at all. We have your, your people still have interaction here, your business units, and so what you've taken your whole, that whole chaotic mess, it's like we can do this. We have a method that we kind of approach this. We can do this for you and with you, right? They would be absolutely involved because they're the one who knows their workflow, of course, right? They're the ones who knows the workflow. And if we do that, then we can help you with reporting. Like they probably never have these or they've had to count manual tick marks. Like how, what are these, what are these cases related to? And are they different geos? Is one geo way out of whack? Do you have a training issue? Do you have some things not quite squared away with benefits? What, what are the HR cases by channel, right? Email, phone, right? If you're, if you're a multi-channel organization, what's the age? Like how long, how long do you take to answer those questions in HR? And, uh, and the quickness, so you have the quickness of resolution. These are just, I mean, you can slice and dice this data, 10 ways to China, but you're showing them some real examples. Oh yeah, which ones get reopened? How, which ones the, oh, who didn't call me in the morning? Which ones like, I don't know, go search the website and then I'll, call me if it doesn't work, right? Call me if you don't find the answer, right? Which ones got closed too soon and actually didn't solve, that didn't sort of solve the question. And so you have a lot of different ways you can slice and dice the data, no problem. So when you think about, right, so this is like putting service management into the HR case management, right? And you can kind of bring it all together where you have single pane of glass, easy to navigate, easy to fulfill, no problem filling out just the simple central repository request and being able to report on it. Bring it all together, right? That's a pretty powerful story to tell, don't you think? And so leveraging service management, we are sitting on a gold mine. We are, and we have been for over a decade. That's why we're so good at it, right? I think he's pretty good at it. But if you can start sharing this story out with your line of business colleagues, you could, and make them the hero, right? They get to be the hero. Let them go to their VP and like, don't believe what I heard about. Ivan was telling me, and Don even showed me some of these like, she drew it out for me. It, it, those are not, that's not difficult, right? That's powerful stuff. But then imagine the, the value to the entire organization, right? So this will just compound and get it even richer, right? The more you have all in one place, um, easier to make it seamless, and, and then you really get the leveraged, leveraged value of service management, right? You're compounding it through these lines of business. So does that give you, do you have some confidence to go have some, start some of those business conversations? I hope, because look, there's a lot of satellite conversation, you know, there's a lot of IT people out there to have, start having these, some of these satellite, at least plant the seeds, start them going, right? That they don't have to live that, keep that chaos forever, for sure. Okay. Uh, how about, did we do something in the pick something up column? Did, did you get one thing from that, maybe? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you, I have, some, uh, I have some other things in here. I'll show you, I'll show you what they are, just so to make it familiar. I'll click through really quick, but I, I have this as part of my deck because I think it does add value. But some of the supplementary material, we have, there's just some examples. These are some things that we've done, but they're how people, you know, how different companies have used vendor management, HR request management, software asset management. Right, so these are just some samples like, well, what, do you, what else did you do with service management? How does that apply? These will just give you, if you wanna go, you can go to the website, you can check these out. Just some other ideas on, oh, that could work for our company. 
yeah, project management. Oh, legal, case managers, of course, we could be doing that. Facilities, right. So who, like, who's doing some of this you know, advanced service management stuff? Also the skills, so as you're mentoring your interns and your own kids, what are some of the skills that translate into service management roles, right? That's one of the most, that's just one of the most fulfilling things I do and I love doing it, working, working with some of the millennials coming into the workforce and like they don't know where to start, they don't even know which questions to ask, and they wouldn't. They're smart, they're technically savvy, oh my gosh, but they don't know, you can help them with business mapping, business skills mapping, right? What are some of the things that they might want to consider? So I listed a couple of those for there. I always include my business books, so um, how many believe leaders are readers? Believe that? Leaders are readers. Sure. Let me give you one more tip. So a guy, uh, real big in the, uh, actually both. Um, and at, when, we, when we talk about HDI and ITSMF, um, for example, there's a lot of synergy there. And you, Kirk, Kirk, yeah, yes. absolutely. So and Kirk's going to be emceeing the Fusion Conference. So we have the Service Management com Conference coming up November 1st to the 4th at the MGM. Coming up here just in about three weeks. Um, Kirk Weasler will be the MC there, and it's co-sponsored with HDI and ITSMF that conference is. But this, the MC of that conference taught me a long time because I asked him, oh my gosh, you have five kids, you travel all the time, you stay so busy, how could you possibly be reading this many books? And he said to me, Brenda, you don't think I read the whole book, do you? I'm like, well, I don't know, kindergarten when I learned to read, you start at the front, you started turning the pages, right? You went from cover to cover, and he said, oh, no, 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 no. Pick what you need, move on. Pick up what you need, and move on. I was like, you could do that? <laughs> and that was so freeing. And so at any given time, I have easily five or six books going on. I'm not reading them necessarily cover to cover all at the same time. And I get through them, but it was very freeing. So anyway, I thought some of these books, and I, I list my books, uh, some of the favorites that I've used with my teams over the years, um, and the authors. So this are, you know, you're welcome to check any of those out. And then finally, uh, Showcase. This happens to be our, our founder, but we have great Showcase um, out on the website. That, and that's, this is part of what we do, right? We, sh we share resources and share tools. If you want to see some examples of taking service manage management beyond uh, IT, there's, a, there's another set of resources for you to check out. And I will take, I try, this was certainly, hopefully this was learning and, and not sales, but I will say um, uh, an appreciation to my own company, Fruition Partners, who allows me time to play at the national level, um, which does take a substantial amount of time, that I usually end up doing during midnight hours or evening like this, but I do appreciate that. And so I did include just a couple things on fruition. Um, we are a service management player and exclusive to service now, but this is just kind of our history and where we are, what we do, so I included just a couple, uh, couple slides in there as an appreciation to um, my, my firm that allows me time to play active in our industry association. So I will certainly send these slides to Ivan, and you can get them out to the group. Um, I'd be honored if you're, if any one piece of them is valuable and you can use it with your teams as well. So with that, I think I will turn it back to Kellyan and Ivan, and you're going to facilitate the panel. Any questions? I've been dying to ask, what is the story behind the raccoons? Oh, the raccoons! <laughs> well, I should, wait, I should wait just a little bit more before I tell you this. Um, do you think I'm pretty regular? I'm pretty regular gal, huh? I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy. All right, so remember you answered that. At one point, we had two, two kitties of our own, my narrow business, and we went out in the spring and we lifted up a chair cover, mom and five kitties, next chair cover, mom and five kitties, next day, we had 26 cats. Oh, so I had to tell you that because you'll think I'm the crazy cat, right? So we placed 26 cats, we actually kept 22, and so in my Christmas letter, a decade ago, I said, you know, we have 22 cats, and I got all these new responses that said, hey, you had a typo in your Christmas letter. <laughs> you said you had 22 cats. You meant two, right? I'm like, no, we have 22. <laughs> and so, I tell you that because we fed cats everywhere. We had inside cats, we had outside cats, we built a special house for the cats, and with, we fed in Marie Calendar pie dishes, and we have cats. We have skunks, we have raccoons. I actually don't even have to get up to see who's outside munching because they, interestingly enough, they crunch at different speeds. <laughs> so cats eat like this, raccoons eat like this, and skunks eat really quick. So depending on the velocity of the crunching, I know who's at the dish. Believe it or not, we actually have pictures with skunks, cats, raccoons, and possums all eating out of the same pie dish. <laughs> 
So hence why I live in El Sobrani, because it's zoned for animals. So there you go. That's the story behind the raccoons. But they are adorable. The baby ones are adorable. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm, I'm so honored.